Hey guys, today I'm going to be making some crystal charms with these bezels that I received from Miniature Sweet. I love these so much. They come in different shapes and I would say they're about the same size, but I decided that I wanted to fill these with different supplies. And of course I had to do my basic resin and I thought because it's a crystal, I should do a clear pigment. So I used my liquid pigments here and I had a little bit of trouble mixing this kind of transition color. It was a teal-ish color. And at first I was going to make it so it was a rainbow when you put them all together. So this one was gonna be a blue one, the middle one was gonna be a more pinky one, and then the final one was gonna be a more yellowy one. But you're gonna see in a second that I gave up on that idea. So this one, the color kinda doesn't match, but this is my favorite color palette. I love blues and purples. Gonna pop the air bubbles with a lighter, make sure you don't get too close or the clear tape on the back is going to shrink and that would be really stinky and quite a disaster. Anyway, I cured that one, I moved on to the next one. I'm going to be using my Martha Stewart glitters and apparently they don't sell these leaf glitters anymore, which is a shame because they are my absolute favorite and I've kind of been hunting on eBay to see if I could stock up on some sets because they are very, very pretty. I've actually been struggling to find glitters that come in a set that are this vibrant and have the colors that I like. Anyway, I'm using these chunky glitters to fill the bezel and you're gonna see at the end here that they were a little bit too chunky. I really struggled to fill some of the smaller holes and I had to do it piece by piece with you know the pointy side of my tool and it was not fun. So if you are going to be making these crystal bezels, I would suggest you use a finer glitter. Now these chunky glitters look really nice. They make them look like real crystals and I like it, but it was just, it wasn't worth all the work that I had to put into it. Now you guys can see here around the edges, it was kind of hard to fill it because the pieces, it was like a puzzle. They wouldn't fit in properly. So that was that, but it still looks good. And then finally, this is something I have never tried before. There are crafters that do make charms like this and they are very good at it, but I'd never done it before. So I have my par pardo, 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 pardo clay here. And this is a very pretty translucent clay, or so I was told, and I bought a set of this clay about, I want to say like two years ago and I'm finally using it for this charm and so it was a little dry had to knead it quite a bit had to be conditioned but thankfully the little holes were pretty easy to fill once the clay was softened and first here I was cutting off the excess but then I found that I could mush the clay in and then roll a little piece of scrap clay over it and it would remove the little, you know, scraps and overhanging bits. And it only needed a really little bit of clay, so I definitely cut off too much. Here I'm gonna try to take a little smaller piece and again, condition it. And I'm just gonna repeat the steps over and over for the whole rainbow. Uh, I will say that this did end up being a pretty translucent clay. I couldn't really tell the difference between this and my female translucent, but I was looking at photos of creations that artists had made with this clay, and I think it's prettier if you make thinner pieces, but that's something I would like to experiment with later on. Oh, and here is a little bit of hand cream. My hands got so dry because of this clay. I remember why. I don't really like working with polymer clay. It's because it's dry, it's hard, it sucks all the moisture from your hands but that was just a little tip saying you should moisturize your hands with hand cream. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, I would love to compare this with the female translucent and see how the colors compare and how the trans, translucentness, translucity, what? <laughs> that is maybe a little video I'll do later on. Here is the completed piece. I'm gonna bake it and you're gonna see how translucent it gets. It's okay. I would suggest using Polymomo Tea's Opal clay tutorial, adding a little bit of glitter into the clay. I think that would look really, really pretty. Here are the three completed pieces. I'm gonna dome them over just for a little bit more shine. Let me know in the comments down below which piece you like the best. I always love glitters, so that's probably my favorite, but I am really happy with how the clay turned out, and I think it'd be fun to make different gradients with the clays, but you might want a clay roller for that because my hands are done. 
Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time.